Welcome to video 3 on the FC Editor Complete Guide series, where I'll be explaining everything you need to know about making custom future cop levels in FC Editor. For this video, I'll be showing you how to texture tiles. Please note that the editor is still in development and things are subject to change. The version used in this video is 0.2. Be sure to check out any update showcase videos to see what's changed. Other than that, let's start texturing. Now in the last video, we jumped between four different edit modes. But for texturing, all we need is texture edit mode. Tiles have their own unique texture data, and that data can be modified similar to how tiles are modified in tile edit mode. Entering texture edit mode, there's a selection preview where the cursor is like with tile edit mode, except this overlay will show the texture. The methods for selecting tiles in tile edit mode is the same for texture and shader edit mode. However, instead of showing the grid's vertices, this time selecting a texture will bring up the UV mapper. For those who aren't familiar with UV mapping, by definition, UV mapping is a way to project a 2D texture onto a 3D model. Now, in the context of FC Editor and tiles, think of it like sampling part of a texture. UV refers to the axis, U is the X axis, and V is the Y axis. So think of a single UV as just a point in the texture. The UV mapper is how we can set what UV coordinates a tile uses. With a tile selected, it will show the UVs of the current selected tile. To zoom in on the texture, simply scroll. The texture can also be panned around by right clicking and dragging. Zooming in, we can see the individual UVs. Like with vertices in a height map edit mode, their order is represented by color. We can move these UVs by clicking on one and dragging. Notice how the tile's texture changes when we do this. All UVs can be moved at once by dragging one of them and holding shift. When moving UVs, a coordinate can be locked by holding a key representing the axis. Holding down X will lock the U slash X axis, and holding down V will lock the V slash Y axis. Let's say there's a specific part on the texture that you want to map to. A new UV map can be made by clicking on the texture and dragging. On the left side of the UV mapper are some helper tools for UV mapping. The first tools are for rotating the UV's order. The next two are for flipping the positioning of the UV's. The last two are for flipping the UV's order. These tools have keybinds attached to them, and you can find the keybinds in settings under texture edit mode. The current tile that we have selected is a quad tile, and because it's a quad tile, there are four UV's. If we select a triangle tile, then the UV mapper will show three. It's important to know that triangle tiles have one less UV than quad tiles. When editing UVs, the UV mapper will show the data on the first selected tile. Changes made to the UV mapper will apply it to all selected tiles. If the first selected tile is a quad, then the mapper can map to selected triangle tiles no problem. However, if the first selected tile is a triangle, it can't map to selected quad tiles because the mapper is missing a UV. It's best if the same shape of tiles are selected when modifying UVs, but if there are different kinds of tiles selected, they may not map as expected, but not a huge deal. Now changing UVs is cool and all, but it's not very helpful if we don't have the texture we want. Top of the UV mapper, there's a dropdown to change what texture palette the mapper uses, and by extension the tile. Opening the dropdown, it will show a range of numbers from 1 through 10. A FutureCop mission file stores 10 256 by 256 bitmaps, and this number refers to which one to use. These textures can also be imported and exported. Right of the dropdown, we have a button for exporting the texture and another for importing. If we click on this button, it will bring up a context menu with a couple of options. FutureCop bitmaps are a little weird, but this is how they work. As mentioned, a mission file has 10 256 by 256 bitmaps. Their format is X1, R5, G5, B5. The X bit is for marking a pixel as semi-transparent. If a pixel is completely black, FutureCop will clip that pixel, meaning it will be fully transparent. When importing, the file must be a .bmp with the X1, R5, G5, B5 format. Along with the lossless bitmap, the mission file stores a 256 color palette for each texture. What that means is that there's a list of 256 unique colors from a texture. If FutureCop is ran in DirectX, the game uses the bitmaps. However, if the game is ran in software, 
What FutureCop will do is make a texture with the 256 color palette based on the bitmap. This happens during runtime. Software rendering is used the most often, so it is important to update the color palette. Going back to the context menu, the first option is to export or import the bitmap. Importing the bitmap will not update the color palette, and if the color palette is not updated, textures won't display the correct colors in-game. The next is to import or export the color palette from a texture. This is a rare use case, but it can be helpful if an existing texture was already imported but it needs the color palette as well. The last is to import or export the bitmap and color palette data along with other data. This file is a completely unaltered mission file texture. Now these options for importing color palette data is only really useful for existing future cop textures. For custom textures, no color palette is really going to fit the texture. However, this is easily combated with the generate color palette button at the bottom left of the mapper. Clicking this will generate a new color palette based on the imported texture. That way, custom textures will display properly in game with their own palette. UV mapping and changing textures is the core of this mode with most of the work on texturing being done with the UV mapper. However, there are a lot of tiles in a section, with a minimum of 256 tiles. Luckily, once one tile has been mapped to a texture of your liking, it can be copied over to any other tile. The first tool in this mode is to copy a tile's texture over to another. It copies the texture of the first selected tile, and applies it to all other selected tiles. This tool can also be easily accessed by hitting Ctrl V. But that's not all with copying textures. This mode features texture presets, for saving a texture and reusing it on other tiles. Right of the screen is a panel for managing presets. Let's first start by saving a preset. First select a tile that you want to save the texture on, and hit the Save Preset button top left of the preset panel. When creating a preset, it will ask for a name. Once created, a preset item will show a preview of the texture and also a label for what kind of texture it is. The one we just saved is a static texture. There are multiple kinds of textures like animated and semi-transparent, but I'll get to those later on. The preset will also remember the shape of the tile that the texture was saved off of. Remember that triangle tiles cannot paste onto quad tiles. To use a preset, simply select a tile and click on the preset item. It will then paste the texture onto the tile. If we right click on a preset item, it will bring up a context menu with a couple of options. First is to rename the preset, and next is to delete a preset. Along with adding presets, preset folders can be added to help keep things a little organized. Right of the saved preset button is a button for creating a folder. Like with creating a preset, it will ask for a name. Once a preset folder has been created, it can be navigated to by clicking on it. Now that we are inside this folder, presets can be saved to the folder. The last two buttons on the preset panel is to save a preset file and load a preset file. These are functionally the same as the escape menu options. Now that we know about the UV mapper and presets, there's one last tool in this mode that helps with UV mapping tiles. For this tool, we'll need to bring back the UV mapper. With no tile selected, open the UV mapper. The UV mapper will still show UVs, but because no tiles are selected, these are essentially just virtual UVs. If a preset is clicked with the UV mapper open, the mapper will show the texture and UVs of the preset, which now brings us to the tool. The last tool in texture edit mode is the UV mapper drawing tool. Clicking on it will enable the tool and allow us to paint textures onto tiles. Whatever data the mapper has will paint onto the tile. And again, presets can be used to easily change what data the mapper has when painting. Now that is all this mode has for UV mapping and texturing. But this mode does more than just UV map tiles. It also handles tile transparency and texture animations. Let's first start with texture animations. In the UV mapper, there is a dropdown right of the import texture button. This dropdown is to set what kind of texture animation the tile will have. Static means that the tile does not have any animations. Moving past static is vector animated. Vector animation has the tile's UVs move 28 pixels in a set direction. Once the UVs get to the destination, the animation will reset. This animation is used most commonly in things like flowing water or conveyor belts. When selecting vector animation, it will seem like nothing happened. 
but this is because the vector hasn't been set. Bottom of the UV mapper are sliders for setting the vector. Once a value has been set, the tile will now start playing the animation. The higher the value, the faster the animation will play. This vector is a property of the section and not on the tile. This means that changing the value will apply to all tiles in the section. If we move over a section, the animation vector will be different in this section than the other. If you are having trouble getting the visual direction right because of this limitation, try rotating the tile's UVs. If a vector animated tile is saved to a preset, the preset will be labeled as vector animated. The next animation option is frame animation. As the name implies, this uses individual UV frames for animation. Selecting this mode will bring up a timeline at the bottom of the mapper. A frame can be selected by clicking on it. The selected frame will be highlighted green, and any changes done on the UV mapper will apply it to the selected frame. Frames can be added with the plus icon, and the minus icon will remove the selected frame. Below the timeline is a small slider for changing the animation speed. Unlike vector animation, this is the delay between frames, meaning a lower value plays the animation faster. Saving a frame animated tile to presets will show the frame animated label. Now it's time for the last feature in texture edit mode, transparency. As mentioned, the X in the XRGB means that the pixel is semi-transparent. If a tile is mapped to a portion that is semi-transparent, the tile will still render as opaque. The reason for this is that the tile is marked as opaque and won't render semi-transparency. To fix this, we simply just need to tell the tile to be semi-transparent. In the texture edit mode toolbar, there are two tools for changing the tile's visibility. The first is to mark the tile as opaque, and the next is to mark the tile as semi-transparent. If we click on the semi-transparent tool, the tile overlay will turn blue. The blue overlay means that the tile is semi-transparent. Now that the tile has the correct visibility, it will now render with semi-transparency. If a semi-transparent tile is saved to a preset, the texture preset will have a T in parentheses in front of the label. With existing textures, all you need to do is map to the semi-transparent part and mark the tile as such. But with custom textures, it gets a little tricky. While most photo editing software allows you to edit the X1, R5, G5, B5 format, it doesn't allow editing of the X value, which is needed for semi-transparency. However, the UV mapper can combat this by allowing us to draw semi-transparency. Once a texture is imported, click on the Edit Transparency button in the bottom right of the mapper. The mapper will then switch to editing the texture. To make a pixel semi-transparent, simply click and draw. The drawing cursor size can be changed with the square brackets on keyboard. The mapper can also draw opaque pixels. Top left of the mapper is to change what kind of visibility you would like to draw. Though, if you mess up while drawing transparency, you can always undo with Ctrl-Z. Once drawing is done, hit the Apply button to apply the changes to the texture, or you can hit Cancel to discard the changes. Now, it's important to remember the color palette. A semi-transparent pixel is a unique color. When drawing semi-transparency, make sure to update the color palette so that it can add the new semi-transparent colors. And that is all for Texture Edit Mode. With texturing, remember schematics. Even though schematics are in texture edit mode, they can allow ways to paste textures more quickly than individual tiles. If you have any questions or would like to follow the project, consider joining the Discord linked below. Now that we can model and texture a level, there's only one more thing left for level geometry, and that's shading. So see you guys then.